the cartography project, as I understand it, is singularly important because it helps us experience the emotions and process the emotions that are happening in our current social and political climate. But it also helps us as artists process and also give voice to those who may not be able to speak for themselves on the national stage. And it helps us as a country to think about what has transpired in a different perspective and bring a momentum out of it that is not centered only in grief and anguish. I feel like being from Minneapolis is interesting because it's like the Midwest. I don't think a lot of people even think black people live in Minneapolis. There's just like a very complicated yet rich, yet, you know, at times there could be tensions as far as like the quality of life for certain people versus other people. So I, I certainly feel like that's sort of the sparks that, you know, really blossomed um, after what we experienced with George Floyd was sort of on the surface, you know, still waters, you know, run deep. To be honest, I was nervous about taking on this project because I didn't live in Minneapolis at the time that Mr. Floyd was taken from us. It became an opportunity to, again, work alongside people who were there. And I lived four blocks away from where George Floyd was murdered. And matter of fact, I went to that spot that called the police on him often to get my little, you know, rolling papers and whatnot. And I have been an activist. Um, Philando Castile also happened in the Twin Cities and like countless other black folks and people with mental illness and native folks and other folks have been murdered and assaulted by police. I was not expecting to be able to publicly reflect, um, to be able to constructively experience this event. I, I am a collaborative composer. Um, and so from its inception, it was about working alongside people who experienced the same thing we all experienced, uh, but a little bit more intimately to create a piece that was collective. There was this moment of magic and heavy and terror and transformation. And for me, I really was interested in getting into this idea of sweetness and abolition within myself as an antidote to what was happening around me. And I think that is a thing I wanted to bring into the piece for black folks is like, how are we getting to luxuriate and softness and sweetness and healing when so much of what this American experience wants us to live is terror and fear, sort of like this repressed existence that like continues to, you know, uplift, you know, white existence at the um, detriment of our own soul journeys. Yeah, so it begins with listening, strong listening. Um, quiet listening as well. So I didn't just listen to the responses to questions that I was posing to a small group of people. Um, I listened to their body language, to their breathing, to their hesitations, to their excitement, to the joy that just kind of like permeates even when we, even when we're remembering tragedy. We still have a, a, this joy that just seeps through in everything. Um, when Liz and I were talking about this piece, a lot of it was not wanting to sort of default to the sort of trauma that like is so associated with the black experience. Like obviously black folks are aware and cognizant of how we live in an anti-black white supremacist society, but like just the sort of rich kind of irreverent joy that we're always able to find and make. So for me, that was, you know, what I really wanted to hold. And also Liz, you know, we sat with a lot of people, black folks in Minneapolis, and just wanted to listen where their hearts were at. So wanting to add multi-dimension multi into those feelings, because I think there's always this singular understanding of like, oh, black people, oh gosh, we so gonna sing and be pain, you know, like all of these like, sort of like ways that almost like they like seeing us down like that. And what I really, 
was so present to was just how much like joy and wildness was a part of the resistance of what was happening in Minneapolis. I think for me, listening to the words now alongside that music and, you know, having last year almost quite immediately after the George Floyd thing, me and her were working on this piece. And it kind of, when you're making art, it can feel like, okay, this is just like a haze that's coming out, but I also needed the distance. Because I do feel like the last year and a half my life has been, you know, like a lot of mini Black Minneapolis activists has been consumed and subsumed in like this experience. Um, but to like now at this moment hear the, you know, piano and the voices and the strings and like feel the alchemy of every sort of wild sort of moment and sadness and tear and like smile and sort of wild like cosmic moment sort of condensed and distilled into all of these magical sort of creatives. It just to me is really cathartic. I think that we have a duty and a responsibility to continue paving the way. I, I think it's kind of the only thing that we know how to do um, because, you know, in the piece, she says, we so free, like all we know how to do is get free. And I think that really is represented in both this piece as well as in the project itself. All we know how to do is continue fighting for liberation. All we know how to do is to be ourselves. All we know how to do is to be trailblazers um, and to be magnanimous as a people. And so I, it's inevitable that the field is going to change. Divine, you know, like to me, it does feel so divine to sit and witness via this musical interpretation so much of the trauma and sadness and how it feels in the piece is like just melancholy and like heavy but also juicy and like kind of um, irreverent you know so to me like I just love that that was able to be maintained. I hope that it allows for what it's not my job to determine but for whom us.
in the lungs ever since the 4th of July, an ancestor born four blocks away, a crossroad to the other side, waxing crescent, even if it ain't what the grandma's grandma called it, on an avenue of conqueror's neighbors, so on the corner popping all kind of fireworks, a hazy mist of us setting fireworks off, none of our ancestors was free, but they was a vibe, it felt more loud for him, need an extension, a bang and kaboom, at night outside my window, sparkling emotions, a light step away and behold the whimsical vibe. Pops, sparks, the flashes, and then so much smoke. Through the fog, they silhouette and laugh and smile into their ritual. Just fire and sparks made for us, by us, independence, and we ain't free. We so free. You ain't, you ain't gonna stop. Abolition, pleasure, and the divine heat of liberation in tiny medium and thick gestures slowly backbend me towards the arc of justice. The imagination of desire is this moment. Change and transform the stars in my cell. 